Penguin Random House Audio presents Will by Will Smith with Mark Manson. This is the author, y'all. Will Smith. Thank you for taking this time with me. I hope you enjoy. Let us begin. The wall. When I was 11 years old, my father decided he needed a new wall on the front of his shop. It would be a big wall, roughly 12 feet high by 20 feet long. The old wall was crumbling and he was sick of looking at it. But rather than hire a contractor or a construction company, he thought it would be a good project for my younger brother, Harry, and me. Daddy O did the demolition. I remember looking at that gaping hole in excruciating disbelief. I was utterly certain that there would never be a wall there ever again. Every day for nearly a year, my brother and I would go to my father's shop after school to work on that wall. He made us do everything ourselves. We dug the footing, mixed the mortar, and carried the buckets. I still remember the formula. Two parts cement, One part sand, one part lime. Harry was in charge of the hose. We'd mix the pile with the shovels out on the sidewalk and then fill two gallon buckets and lay our separate bricks. We did it without any rebar or wood forms, just one of those levels with the little water bubble in the middle. If you know anything about construction, you know this is a loony ass way to do this. If we keep it real, This is chain gang kind of labor. Today, we would just call Child Protective Services. This is a job so tedious and unnecessarily long that what ended up taking two kids most of a year would have only taken a team of grown men a couple of days at most. My brother and I worked weekends, holidays, vacations. We worked through the summer that year. It didn't matter. My father never took a day off, so neither could we. There were so many times I remember looking at that hole, totally discouraged. I couldn't see how this was ever going to end. The dimensions became unfathomably large in my mind. It seemed like we were building the Great Wall of West Philly, billions of red bricks stretching infinitely into some distant nowhere. I was certain that I would grow old and die still mixing concrete and carrying those buckets. But Daddy-O wouldn't let us stop. Every day we had to be there, mixing concrete, carrying buckets, laying bricks. It didn't matter if it was raining, if it was hot as hell, if I was mad, if I was sad, if I was sick, if I had a test the next day, there were no excuses. My brother and I tried to complain and protest, but it made no difference to Daddy-O. We were trapped. This wall was a constant. It was permanence. Seasons changed. Friends came and went. Teachers retired. But the wall remained. Always the wall remained. One day, Harry and I were in a particularly stank mood. We were dragging our feet and grumbling impossible this and ridiculous that. Why we have to build a wall for anyway? This is impossible. It's never going to get done. daddy overheard us, threw down his tools, and marched over to where we were yapping. He snatched a brick out of my hand and held it up in front of us. Stop thinking about the damn wall, he said. There is no wall. There are only bricks. Your job is to lay this brick perfectly, then move on to the next brick, then lay that brick perfectly, then the next one. Don't be worrying about no wall. Your only concern is one brick. He walked back in the shop. Me and Harry just looked at each other, shook our heads. Old boy is a kook. And just went back to mixing. Some of the most impactful lessons I've ever received, 
I've had to learn in spite of myself. I resisted them, I denied them, but ultimately the weight of their truth became unavoidable. My father's brick wall was one of those lessons. The days dragged on and as, as much as I hated to admit it, I started to see what he was talking about. When I focused on the wall, the job felt impossible, never ending. But when I focused on one brick, everything got easy. I knew I could lay one damn brick well. As the weeks passed, the bricks mounted and the hole got just a little bit smaller. I started to see that the difference between a task that feels impossible and a task that feels doable is merely a matter of perspective. Are you paying attention to the wall or are you paying attention to the brick? Whether it was acing the test to get accepted into college, hitting it big as one of the first global hip hop artists, or constructing one of the most successful careers in Hollywood history. In all cases, what appeared to be impossibly large goals could be broken down into individually manageable tasks. Insurmountable walls comprised of a series of conceivably layable bricks. For my entire career, I have been absolutely relentless. I've been committed to a work ethic of uncompromising intensity. And the secret to my success is as boring as it is unsurprising. You show up and you lay another brick. Pissed off, lay another brick. Bad opening weekend, lay another brick. Album sales dropping, get up and lay another brick. Marriage failing, lay another brick. Over the past 30 years, like all of us, I've dealt with failure, loss, humiliation, divorce, and death. I've had my life threatened, my money taken away, my privacy invaded, my family disintegrated. And every single day, still, I got up, mixed concrete, and laid another brick. No matter what you're going through, there is always another brick sitting right there in front of you, waiting to be laid. The only question is, are you going to get up and lay it? I've heard people say that a child's personality is influenced by the meaning of their name. Well, my father gave me my name. He gave me his name. And he gave me my greatest advantage in life. My ability to weather adversity. He gave me will. It was a cold, overcast day, nearly a year after my brother and I had begun. By that time, the wall had become such a fixture in my life that thoughts of finishing it felt like delusions. Like if we ever did finish, there would tragically be another hole right behind it that immediately needed to be filled. But on that frigid September morning, we mixed the final pile, filled the final bucket, and laid the final brick. daddy -o had been standing there watching the last few bricks being set into place. Cigarette in hand, he stood quietly admiring our work. Harry and I set and leveled the final brick. Then silence. Harry kind of shrugged. What now? Do we jump? Do we cheer? Do we celebrate? We gingerly stepped back and stood on each side of daddy -o. The three of us surveyed our family's new wall. daddy -o plucked his cigarette to the ground, twisting his boot to put it out, exhaled the final drag of smoke, and never taking his eyes off the wall, he said, now, don't you boys ever tell me there's something you can't do. Then he walked into the shop and got back to work. Chapter one. Fear. I've always thought of myself as a coward. Most of my memories of my childhood involve me being a sample complete. Ready to continue? 
complete. Ready to continue?